All right, in this video, we're going over the method for how to solve a linear first order differential equation using the integrating factor method. So first of all, we have to put our linear differential equation into this form where it's dy dt or y prime, you can say it that way, plus p of t times y is equal to g of t, where p of t and g of t can be other functions of t, but not functions of y. So what we do is we multiply everything in this equation by our integrating factor, we'll call that uh, mu of t, okay? Uh, but mu of t is a very special property. It's not just any function. Uh, it has the property where if we multiply it to a p of t in a differential equation of this form, uh, like this, p of t, it's actually going to equal the derivative of mu of t. Okay, now later in the video, we'll, we'll talk about this, but for now, we're just going to find the general solution in terms of mu of t. So what we do, we said multiply it by both sides. Now to save time, actually, I'm just going to not write this bracket uh, t. I'm just going to drop the t's just to save time. So they are still there. Uh, I might bring them up later in the video. It's just a lot of time always writing those. So we have mu times y prime plus mu times p times y is equal to mu times g. Okay, but we said that mu times p is equal to mu prime at t, so we can write this again. We can say mu times y prime plus mu prime times y, right? This we substitute for mu prime. Mu prime at y yeah, is equal again to mu g. Now this looks like the, the result of the product rule, right? If we had mu, if we have the derivative of mu times y, we would get mu times y prime plus mu prime mu prime plus y. So we can write this, This we can rewrite this part as mu times y prime, right? That's just the result, that's the same thing. If we took the derivative of mu times y, we would get this. And again, this is equal to mu of g. All right, so what we wanna do now is let's integrate both sides. So we can put our little integral signs here, dt, dt, remember we're just not writing the t's to save time, uh, but they are still there. So the integral of the derivative of something is just something. So we get mu times y plus its integration constant is equal to, well, we'll just leave the side the same for now, mu times g dt, integral of mu g dt. All right, and remember the general solution is we wanna solve for y, so first of all, We'll bring the constant over, so we get the integral of, and you know what, let's write the t's in this time, because uh, this will be the last step for now. Mu of t times g of t dt uh, plus c. We, it doesn't matter that it stayed the same sign. If we subtract an arbitrary constant from both sides, it's still an arbitrary constant. Uh, so we can have whatever sign this on this number we want, because it can be whatever number we want for now. Uh, and so we had y was still on that side, and now we'll just divide both sides by mu. Um, you know what, maybe let's write y of t. Um, y of t is equal to, uh, that's kind of an ugly looking c, let's just rewrite that. c, okay perfect. I uh, know we've divided both sides by mu of t. And there you go. That's actually the general solution for a first order linear differential equation, it's a mouthful, uh, that has this form. So let's go ahead and circle this. And yeah, we can we can label it if we want. We can just say this is the general solution. Just like that. Cool. Um, so this is in terms of mu of t, but we still don't really know what mu of t is, right? Even though this is general, uh, not using specific numbers, but we can we can find out a little bit more about mu of t. It's actually kind of cool. So if we start with this equation, uh, we'll rearrange it so we can say that p of t is equal to mu prime of t over mu of t. Right? We just divided both sides by mu of t. But if we have um, if we look at this, we have something mu prime over mu. If we have another example, maybe let's just change it to like, oh, if we had ln of x, right? When we uh, when we take the derivative of ln of x, we get 1 over x times x prime. 
which is equal to x prime over n. And that's what we're getting here. This is, or sorry, x prime over x. I don't know where that n came from. Um, so here we have uh, x prime over x. Here we have mu prime over mu. So what that's saying is this is also equal, mm, p of t is also equal to uh, ln, the derivative of ln of mu of t. Uh, one, two, that's a lot of brackets, uh, like that. All right, perfect. Uh, so now what we want to do is let's let's take the uh, let's take the integral of both sides. So we have integral of p of t dt is equal to the integral of this whole expression ln of well, mu at t. A uh, couple more brackets. The derivative of ln of mu of t. And so when we do that. Uh, the derivative sign and the integral sign will disappear. So we have the integral of p of t dt is equal to ln of mu of t. So this is why I dropped the t's before. It just takes a lot of extra time to write them. I should have done that this time as well. That's okay. Uh, and then we also get an integration constant. Let's call it k. Why not? Now what we can do is we'll move this k over to the other side. We'll rearrange this a little bit to write it like this. We'll have ln of mu of t. Uh, okay, uh, and this will equal the integral of p of t dt plus k. Again, we don't need to change the sign on this k because we don't even know what this number is. It's just arbitrary. All right, so what we want to do here now Let's exponentiate both sides. We'll raise both sides like this. Um, and what we'll have is if we have e to the ln of something, that's the same thing as just that something. So we can write this side as mu of t. And uh, what we can do is we can change this side. So we have e to the power of the integral of p of t dt times e to the k, right? That's just a log rule that we can make that, that change. But this is e to, an, to the raised to the power of an arbitrary constant, so that's still the, an arbitrary constant, right? So we can just rewrite this as k, all right? Or what we can do is, if we, if we write it as multi times k, we can just bring the k out front and put it right there. Hopefully you caught that. All right, so look at this. Now we know what mu of t is. Mu of t is k times e to the power of pt dt. So let's go back to our general solution over here and let's substitute this in. So we get y of t is equal to the integral of mu of t, which is kt or ke to the, the power of all that stuff, um, times g of t dt. All right? plus plus c, and this is all over mu again, which is this guy. All right, so what we can do is, because this is a, a constant, k is the integration constant from somewhere else, but it is a constant number, we can actually move it outside of the integral. Okay, so we can write it here. And then we can divide k through, so we can divide k, by k, and then this term also has to be divided by k, so we can put it like that. So these k's disappear, they're gone now, and we have some arbitrary constant c divided by some other arbitrary constant k. That's just another arbitrary constant, right? We could call that c1 or something, right? So, or we can just, here, we'll just rewrite this again one last time because it is still just any arbitrary constant, let's just call it c. So there we go. We have uh, now this part here, y of t. This is also the general solution. Um, the only difference here is we actually know what mu of t is. And if you're given a problem that has the form, this form, y prime plus p of t y equals equal to g of t, then we'll actually be given p of t, it'll be part of the, the problem, and we'll be able to solve for what mu of t is and then write the general solution in this form. All right, so we're gonna do that in the next video. I will see you guys there, and we'll do an actual problem with real numbers.